Hey guys, let's get more news about Warriors, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Warriors defense sets the tone as Steve Kerr pushes the right buttons to seal the deal against the Celtics. Synergy tracking has counted only three teams in the NBA who have trapped around pick and rolls this season, the Golden State Warriors, the Brooklyn Nets, and the Denver Nuggets. The difference between the total number of traps the Warriors have tallied, 40, and the total number of traps the Nets and the Nuggets have tallied, 11, is a chasm, but the Warriors, curiously, have allowed opponents to score 1.175 points per possession on a trapped pick and roll, which isn't a particularly good number to be giving up. However, the Warriors have used their trapping scheme to set the tone for the rest of their defensive efforts in a given game. Trapping, otherwise known as blitzing or doubling around a screen, has its pros and cons, just like all pick and roll coverages. It can engender high energy, high awareness, and promote full focus and intensity out of the gates. It can expose ball handlers who aren't the most astute decision makers when placed into sticky situations. At the very least, it can take the ball out of their hands and funnel the decision making and scoring responsibilities onto someone who isn't as capable in those departments. It can speed up teams who prefer to play a slow and methodical half court game, forcing them into mistakes they're not accustomed to making. The plan worked in the first half against the Boston Celtics, who turned the ball over 10 times, 20.4% of their offensive possessions uncharacteristic given that they are the best team in the league at minimizing turnovers, 11.1% turnover percentage. But it takes a special team, or the makings of one, to make the defending champions and favorites to repeat highly uncomfortable and flash their bad form. The Celtics looked unprepared to handle the Warriors' traps out of the gates. In particular, Jason Tatum's trap handling chops were tested right away, a subtle part of why the Warriors' traps have been successful and rarely taken advantage of is the presence of a roamer at the nail, who perhaps has the toughest job on the back line, tag any rollers acting as release valves, close out quickly on poppers, and keep tabs on the weak side wing and corner while initiating a potential X-out rotation, if needed. The short roll above was covered by Moses Moody, and he performed his role brilliantly by rotating toward Nenea's Quetta and forcing the turnover. Fast forward five minutes later, the Warriors spring another two to the ball coverage against Tatum, with another small wrinkle added in. When Draymond Green's man comes up to set the screen, listen carefully to what he yells to Andrew Wiggins, Green yells out weak twice, not to hurl an insult toward Tatum, mind you, but to inform Wiggins of the weak pick-and-roll coverage, the definition of which is self-explanatory, Wiggins placing himself between Tatum and the screen, shading him toward his weak hand, left, and having Green there to help with the coverage. Tatum does manage to find Quetta, but Gary Payton too is there to rotate and put his hands on the ball, which baffles Quetta and forces him to pass out to Horford. Buddy Heald is there to make him think, and Horford's hesitation costs him his shooting rhythm. It wasn't only Tatum who was given the trapping treatment. The Celtics employed Derek White occasionally as the lead ball handler with Tatum on the bench, while also running action that gives their bigs decision-making reps up top and at the elbow, not unlike the Warriors themselves, although not to the same extent and volume. One of those elbow sets involve the split-action concept, something the Warriors have been all too familiar with. Nowadays, they're finding themselves having to defend it as its usage has become more popular and ubiquitous. In the Warriors' case, familiarity breeds effectiveness. Watch as the ball is fed to Luke Cornett on the elbow, after which White and Peyton Pritchard try to run split action on the opposite slot, based on the personnel involved, a switch between Heald and Lindy Waters 3 seems to be the correct coverage choice. But with Waters staying in contact with White and Heald keeping close tabs on Pritchard around the guard-guard screen, Synergy Tracking has counted only three teams in the NBA who have trapped around pick-and-rolls this season, the Golden State Warriors, the Brooklyn Nets, and the Denver Nuggets. The difference between the total number of traps the Warriors have tallied, 40, and the total number of traps the Nets and the Nuggets have tallied, 11, is a chasm, 
but the Warriors, curiously, have allowed opponents to score 1.175 points per possession on a trapped pick-and-roll, which isn't a particularly good number to be giving up. Wiggins' defense outshines offensive woes to start Warriors season. Andrew Wiggins still is searching to find the consistent shooting stroke that helped make him an all-star three years ago when the Warriors won their sixth NBA title, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with his defense. Just ask Boston Celtics star Jason Tatum. Wiggins was one of the primary defenders against Tatum on Wednesday when the Warriors handed the defending champs their second loss of the 2024-25 NBA season, a 118-112 Golden State victory that should cement coach Steve Kerr's squad as a legitimate contender. Tatum, a five-time All-Star who also was a member of Team USA in the 2024 Paris Olympics, had 32 points but needed 20 shots and a monster third quarter, 17 points with four three-pointers, to get there. Loved wigs tonight, Kerr told reporters at TD Garden. The game started out a little slow for him but really got into Jason, tried to make it as tough as possible. Jason was still phenomenal and really got it going in the second half, but I thought Wiggs did a really good job on him. Wiggins, who missed two games earlier this season with a lower back strain, has a 107.7 defensive rating that places him among the top small forwards in the NBA. That defense also has helped keep Wiggins in Kerr's rotations while the 29-year-old chases down his offense. Wiggins finished with 16 points on 6 of 14 shooting, 0 4 3 behind the arc, and is shooting 44.4% from the floor, 32 of 62, his lowest shooting number since the 2018 19 season when he shot a career low 41.2%. To be fair, Wiggins did connect on a pivotal mid range shot that gave the Warriors a lead in the back and forth fourth quarter. He also made a pair of clutch free throws with 25 seconds remaining. And then there was the layup. The missed layup, to be exact. Early in the first quarter, the Warriors got out on a fast break and Buddy Heald dished the ball to Wiggins, who was racing toward the bucket. Wiggins grabbed the ball and went up to lay it in, but the ball went over the hoop, rolled on the back iron, then fell away. Warriors update Brandon Podziemski's injury status versus Celtics. The Golden State Warriors can't catch a break with their backcourt. Following Stephen Curry's return to the line versus the Houston Rockets on Monday, Brandon Podziemski left the same contest at the start of the second half. According to reports, Podziemski fell ill. Warriors head coach Steve Kerr updated Podziemski's injury status before their Wednesday evening showdown against the Boston Celtics. Kerr said Podziemski will sit in the Warriors' primetime ESPN matchup versus the Celtics. Although the Warriors didn't clarify the exact sickness, it must be severe if Podziemski can't play. The second-year guard is one of the more competitive players on the team and provides versatility off the bench for the 6-1 to one Warriors. Furthermore, despite his modest counting stats and subpar shooting splits, Podziemski leads the team in on-off stats at plus 24. Podziemski isn't a star at this juncture in his young career, but he's a winner and showcases flashes of brilliant plays. The Warriors have their hands full against the reigning NBA champions, but the Celtics have injuries they must work through on Wednesday evening. For one, Jalen Brown isn't suiting up as he nurses a left hip flexor strain. Moreover, the Celtics are still without Chris Tapps Porzingis, who has a rare leg injury. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Brandon Podziemski? Leave your opinion in the comments.